will have Mr. Girish Sahane, Shahane first, then Mithu Sen. Girish is one of the few, very rare few thinkers on art who we have. He is very young, but don't take him you know, non-seriously. His, his, he is uh, as much, um, you know, as, as taller as we can imagine uh, in his thinking on art. And uh, many, many, uh, you know, artists and critics are afraid of him also. He's, he's very frank and he, he tells and says what he thinks. I wouldn't say much because Mrs. Judge has more to say about him. We have been wanting to, you know, invite him for a long, long time, but now we thought it's the most opportune time and more so because he, he is also uh, director of the Skoda Prize in India and uh, Mithu Sen has won that award. So I, we thought that would be a good kind of a pairing and combination and Mithu, as we all know, she is a wonderful artist, young, new, talented artist who has broken new grounds in the field of art. Welcome most of you and welcome all of you. Thank you. I always try to talk so much, especially with Girish, so that Girish won't get enough time to cross me or say some, put me in a, like, you know, because I'm so nervous, because... <laughs> I have to say one thing though, being the curator of that project. <laughs> oh God, I, I knew that it is going to happen. <laughs> that no thing project, uh, the curator was Girish, and I really had a like long dialogue with him, because I still am doing that. Um, the reason which she fails to mention, which is fine because she didn't mention names, was that the first original idea was different. It was changed very close to the opening of the exhibition. And the space was not really a room, it was 10 feet by 12 feet. And we didn't think that the concept would, uh, however good the concept was, it would necessarily convey what it wanted to in that space of 10 feet by 12 feet. The final reason was that it was actually where it was placed was the very last work anybody would see in the exhibition. And so it felt like a bit of a cliche just to place a no thing work right at the end. If it was in the middle somewhere, it might still have worked, I think. Anyway, that having been said, that is a great, uh, <laughs> I mean, she's so prolific and has done just so much on so many lands. And it's really useful to get this kind of... Uh, um, presentation because most of us obviously don't see stuff that she's done in Kenya and Brazil and Tokyo and places like that. So it's really helpful. Thanks very much. Thanks. I'd like to thank you for your freedom, total freedom. Please carry it on and don't be embarrassed about your English. Uh, I have a, a very good friend, Bani Prasanu, who's an artist. He's a, over 80 years old now. His, uh, uh, he paints in the typical Bengal style, and but his movements are a lot more, which you can see through his paintings. He doesn't exhibit very much in India. He's more in the Swedish countries and there. But he writes poetry, both in English and Bengali. And we love the symmetry and the whole thing about the English, which he brings out in a totally different way. Playing with words and bringing out meanings of words which are incredibly stronger than the actual English that we uh, tend to talk every day. Thank you. Please carry on your freedom and don't hesitate. I'd like to talk, I'd like you to talk also, you spoke a lot about English and the issues about English. Uh, you like to talk a bit about beauty, ideas of beauty, the body is so important to your work and your evolving sort of ideas about that. I think it's like same like that my deal with uh, language uh, because uh, when I was growing up being a Bengali and especially with that kind of dark skin um, because my mom and my sister they are really really uh, very fair and beautiful and I've been constantly compared with them like how I can be like a that time I didn't I was not familiar with the term black sheep so <laughs> I could have answered them that I am the black sheep in the family so <laughs> Uh, I was not so smart, <laughs> but I was really like uh, growing up, uh, I was an athlete and uh, I wanted to be PT Usa. I don't know if so anybody in their life as a girl like want to be a PT, want to be PT Usha. So, but that was my dream. I used to really, I was a sprinter, I used to run without like, you know, I can't see anything like this. But my sister was really sad. 
seeing these things. I think she suffered more than me. She's the closest person in my life. And in um, when I was, I think, four or five years old, during Durga Puja, my mother bought both of her uh, sisters like two beautiful baby pink, baby pink uh, fox, beautiful, beautiful. And we are very happy wearing that, going to the pandal. And I don't remember that face, but I only remember that sound that somebody said, why you are wearing this pink? Pink is not a color for you. Pink is for Moon, your sister. And as a five years old, from that day, I think that color pink was totally vanished from my palette. So as a child, pink is one of the best color, I assume. But I could not, you know, it was a fear of using pink. It was uh, anger, it was everything. And till I grew up and I had my show called I Hate Pink. Though that show was, um, show had many other issues about gender politics, about race, or many things like uh, But the, the source was there, that little baby pink frog, which even I had a little painting with this pink frog. And um, so, but, and another thing is like, um, I was very good student in my, in my school, in academic school, and my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, but when I was in class 11, I was 17 years old, I, f I just felt suffocated seeing that kind of pressure of the middle class, uh, middle class pressure of sending their children into engineering or, you know, medical schools. And uh, I was not against, like as a feminist, I'm not against men. So as a, as a, like, you know, good student, I was not against medical or engineering. But whenever I was imposed by something, I, my body reacted. So I didn't want to go to um, those kind of schools. And almost, we, I mean, against their will, I went to Shantiniketan without understanding or knowing about an art college's existence. And it was a very funny, I mean, I filled up the form and I was called for the interview before my class 12 result was out. And uh, that interview was very strange because there's nothing about art because they didn't ask. I just wanted to do all that other things. I was talking like this. And I don't know why they selected me. And when I told my parents that I'm selected and it was like 10 days before our higher secondary result. And then they're like totally opposed. And I said, I'm you know, like requesting you to give me two weeks in my life to enjoy. I want to see what is there because I don't know about this art college thing. And I went there and the very first, there was a ragging period and very first period, like first day or second day, one girl, I think she was, and it was an international university, you know, like a lot of other students also were there. One girl came to me and hold my hand and say like, you know, you are beautiful. And I was like looking at her and I said like, are you ragging me? Because I was not familiar with this kind of things. I, was not, I took it very spontaneously as a ragging. But she said, no, 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 listen, listen, I, I know. But you are beautiful. You have a beautiful, you know, kind of skin and complexion. So I came back to my hostel. I wrote a letter to my father saying that this is my place and I want to be here. Because I first time I felt uh, my sense of belonging as I am, my ex not as an athlete, not as a promising poet or whatever, but just because as a as a as a human being, as a woman, in a like 17 and a half years old, with all my emotions in this adolescent, adolescent period, and I mean, I wanted to be acknowledged like that, and so the beauty started changing, the notion of beauty started changing from my also like you know landscape of my mind. Because before that, even I was in my school, in a girls' school I was studying, I was such a good actor, but I was never given the main role. I was always given the male role because I was tall and I was dark. So, so all those things I was like questioning about because I know like that kind of uh, baggage in our you know, life, uh, the, like the, for the society and whatever. Uh, it is not easy to uh, handle or also overcome. So I, I, I went to that and, and I started becoming beautiful. And today if somebody says, you are beautiful, I really like, I <laughs> nod my head and I said, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the beauty is actually uh, the confidence and self-love and, uh, you know, like in your mind. 
and uh, we all like cultivate our own beauty beauty is not that even like the my half full series they are all beautiful you know when you see it as an art piece you say this is beautiful and i just think like what is beautiful like if it's me and when i am like you know uh, standing in front of or in front of you i am not beautiful because then all the conditions are working that your your color skin your race your background your family everything what is making you beautiful so that uh, i think that was like um, what i was uh, I was answering something. Yes, yes, <laughs> and very, and very well. <laughs> Just the <laughs> uh, so you you talked of skill as well, and you acknowledged where, like you were saying, yes, I am beautiful, but yes, I am skillful, uh, but that was also not always acknowledged, was it? Oh, uh, was your skill always acknowledged uh, in your sort of in Shantini Ketan, for oh. example? In Shantiniketan, um, uh, well, I, um, you know, like what sh I learned from Shantiniketan, like is like that that confidence I gained. So, uh, all my life I'll acknowledge that that kind of freedom I got and that spirit and energy I received. But I was not really a very good student um, in this art school because that time that all the seven years I was only writing because that that was a time when I, I was like over flooded with words all my uh, always my bag used to carry big notebooks with poems and constantly I can write over the night and everything my friends other because in Shanti then you can go it's not restricted in one uh, premises that you know like art department or something so I used to go to music department literature department meet all those people and explore the way the life should be explored so um, so that is my education from Shantini Keta not the certificate I definitely got all these big good certificates like first class fast or something like this but that worked till I was I came to Delhi and applied for a school job and I got it um, because of my results and all this and I was skilled in a way um, yes like it's a practice you you practice some academic things but it doesn't make you um, skill cannot make you like uh, like somebody maybe you really want to be so skill we use and uh, and these days I think uh, when somebody says like you are very good in drawing you are very skilled or good I want to confess that I am really not so good because most lot of my drawings I get the reference from Nate I, I use them I see them and I manipulate them so there are like a plenty of you know uh, uh, plenty of uh, process you can add up these days so if I'm skilled I'm skilled on that manipulation of making that composition which looks beautiful in your eyes but what constantly works in my mind is like that 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 complex no. complexity of the layers of putting it and constantly questioning it and constantly living in it yes. so um, and there I'm never skilled because I'm constantly and I'm every day I'm learning I'm going through it and I cannot be skilled and I, I don't want to be skilled yeah. because the moment I'll be skilled it will be in a kind of a mannerism I'll start repeating that skill so and I yeah. cannot like push myself and that is what I want to, I want to constantly till my last bit. I just want to do, like, want to push myself, want to break this boundary. Not for the sake of breaking brown boundary, but just do it because it gives all the excitement and charms. You know, it's yeah. like it's like using that sexuality, like the charming things. You know, yeah. you know like your your work is preoccupied with the body. Obviously, needless to say, even the hair, the teeth. You know everything you use, the imagery. Now again, coming back to Shanti Niketan, particularly, which is known as a fairly conservative kind of place. Well, was there like that breaking out into something that is about the body in these ways? Was it difficult for you? Did, did you face a lot of resistance? was different at that period. I remember in my master degree, I was doing mostly um, land, not landscape. I was making trees, um, and in the in my final submission, I actually put paintings along with my poems and those poems were a bit strong like um, and um, I was 
<laughs> I do not know like, uh, but this so called that strong imageries in my works were never been explored during my college period. But I was, I myself was really very strong and kind of explicit like kind of character. So if I consider my whole practice a lifetime as a performance, because that also I feel, I do not like like this uh, separated small projects, shows, works, everything like a, all together they become one performance and life becomes one artwork or one performance. So if I think in that way, that time I was like that because the scenes that, they, that the girl uh, told me that I'm beautiful. Before that, I used to only wear clothes is, as a even as a like you know young girl, like a savvy colors, and I just was so confused with colors which I should wear. I mean, so I gave up and I just either I was wearing whatever I was given or sometimes really like so my favorite colors are you know like were never been. Especially I was asked not to wear black, which these days I mostly wear, I love black. Um, and sometimes uh, like, like, by, you know, like a, as a joke I said like, uh, you call me, you say that I am black, so there is, you can see the difference, I am not really black. And when I travel African countries, people say like, um, these African peoples are really like, a, their, their, their complexion is like a greenish black or something, a magenta and all those colors, all colors, like you know. And then they look at me and they say, you are brown. And so that my, my brain, in my brain, the color palette is constantly, you know, it, it, it plays such a wonderful role. So I think in my life, I make my own dictionary, own vocabulary, own palette or everything my own. And I want to share that with, with love with everybody, but not necessarily I'm saying like I'm go, it's a statement I'm going to establish that things. It's not like that. It's just like, you know, what I'm experiencing and uh, feeling good, feeling confident and then I'm sharing and then I don't know if it's like a high thought I, I can be placed or it can be considered as the way I am but I'm, I'm fine whatever I am. But you're also, you're very contrarian, right? I mean you've made that clear. If somebody says do this, you'll always, if not the opposite, do something else. The artist is present, well I won't be present. If you do Vuitton then I'll do fetuses, it's, you know. So it's in in this show, this no thing show as well. It was the opposite you know, the, of the, everything. The teasing is like uh, one of my. I think like unless you tease or provoke somebody, the real responses doesn't come out. It's we all are like human being. That the human psyche is like that. No matter how poised, how calm, and how you know, like you know, um, intellectual, and you know, <laughs> you are like. Uh, but these are all like for for me. Sometimes it's so fake because I then. Uh, I, when I provoke and then the real things comes out and I just love uh, looking at this kind of raw and uh, true, ex you know, uh, responses uh, by the people because I live, this is my source of, uh, you know, living. So I travel as a traveler, like all over the world, I just, I am in my hunger, you know, my, you know, like the so deep and, you know, like so dense that if I don't get the responses, I just feel like, you know, even like uh, what I said, like mentioned in the mo uh, beginning, that my, my mother-in-law, the dead body of my mother-in-law, like responded like with her warmth in the, in the coldness that, that, that feet after six years of her day, the rigor mortis happened. So it was cold, but I never felt like, you know, I was feeling like, you know, there was a connection and I will never forget that face. I mean, that is also beauty, how little, you know, like, that, that, that face and uh, I don't know, I mean, it, it, I have that, that kind of grotesque kind of, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but yeah. this is in our, this is in our history, this is in our, you know, like uh, we have that, that all this tantric uh, practice and everything, you know, like, so yes. that kind of grotesqueness is, uh, you know, like uh, there and yeah. uh, where, so, um, I mean, historically we can even, you know, like kind of connect. Sure. Uh, that is your duty, like not mine. <laughs> all the historians, yeah. that, all the people I made, lot of PhD students, like people here. So I said, like, I will just do my work, and I really get so tense and nervous when I have to do some kind of paper or present these things. You can't believe, like, this eight ten pages almost yesterday night after coming back from Jamshedpur till two o'clock. I was writing and trying to. And I thought like this time I'm going to Chandigarh, it's like such an honor to, in, in a, you know, to do your things. And I wanted to be really prolific and 
good and wanted to read this and now I mm -hmm. don't even want to see because I didn't say a single word from what I have written here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Are there any questions? Yes, at the back. Uh, first of all, ma'am, you're beautiful. And uh, I, I just, while uh, listening to your talk, you mentioned feminism a couple of times. And uh, I just want to ask you, how did you get introduced to the term as such? And uh, how do you relate to it? And do you also sometimes feel that it becomes a trap? No, I don't, I don't really think it's, it's a trap, unless you are really, I mean, I, you know, like many, many times I just, uh, when I'm asked like about feminism, if I am a feminist, I, I just say no, because sometimes I think um, the feminism and or the, the whole the gender politics, which uh, Girish also mentioned about like the hijras and all. So it's scientifically, if you see, these are like just a kind of quantity of chromosomes, like you know that male gender, female gender, or like the third sex or whatever. With this whole pinky pramanic issues, all those things, actually. So uh, if we can just go beyond that chromosome factors uh, <laughs> it could have been such a you know great uh, place to a uh, platform to live on but no because I really celebrate that kind of beautiful womanhood or malehood or you know humanhood um, or whatever and um, uh, when it is it comes you know like kind of a politics or this abuse and all these things I say like I, I don't believe in this kind of you know like this gender issues so by denying it, actually, I want to ignore that fact. I, when I, when in our life, when you ignore something, that means you are really not accepting it. So I don't accept that fact that it exists. So that is my response. And therefore, there one graffiti works where I say that I can imagine myself as an artist, but I can't imagine my paintings are done by a woman. So that says the whole thing, like, you know, kind of, um, it has all these layers of uh, accepting or denying that the feminist or feminism. Um, sorry, I, I mean, I, I think I'm distracted. Like, uh, no, did you, yeah? you answered the question? Yeah. Is it? It's only the full stop that is that. Like you, <laughs> you, you make your points really well, actually. Uh, uh, Girish, uh, see, you talked about. Uh, uh, two, three things which are very important. Number one, you said that uh, like uh, uh, art has uh, by and large not been responsible or not been able to uh, kind of bring about much changes politically or otherwise. And it, it's, it's a tall order to ask this kind of a question, I know. But mm -hmm. since you are a ambassador of this, you, you, I think you would certainly try to attempt uh, attempt to answer that and then we are, we are all sitting in here discussing art watching art and what does art do yeah, yeah. if it doesn't do much then what does it do does it then do? why art yeah no i agree i think that it does a lot it just does not in visual art and contemporary visual art and i should narrow it uh, down because there are periods when art probably did more in the public realm uh, so I'm spe speaking specifically of a historical moment when art stopped after, particularly after realism stopped being the normal form. Uh, it stopped communicating with as wide a uh, public as it used to. And uh, understanding or appreciating art became increasingly a matter of understanding the history of art rather than some kind of slightly more direct access. So I wouldn't claim that there was ever a completely direct access to art. So, so I'm talking of contemporary art and what it does really, it, I do believe it does mainly at the individual level, you know, and one should not look uh, down on that. And I think that a lot of writing on art does look down on that because it can't be quantified in any way what it does. Whereas political change can be talked of in a fairly rigorous manner or a pseudo rigorous manner. You know, so if something is an act of resistance, you know, it just sounds very grand, isn't it? It's an act, if you actually say how exactly is it an act of resistance, then you realize that that's why I say it's pseudo rigorous, that it isn't actually an act of resistance. I can describe what Iram Sharmila's act as an act of resistance, you know, to say, <laughs> to say that a video work created by an artist in Delhi is an act of resistance, I think is, well, Stretching it, stretching the definition of it, but it sounds good. Uh, 
so so yeah art art works and is very important the interesting thing about art is that it seems not necessary and is yet entirely universal as something you know and when you at any given moment it might seem just supplementary or unnecessary but of course when you look back on cultures they are defined almost entirely by their art production yeah so so it's this curious mix of something that is extraordinarily important and extraordinarily superfluous and if you choose to have political change as the only framework through which uh, you judge something then it will not seem very important <laughs> But I just don't think that's the framework to judge it by. Yeah. Uh, would you then believe that if art went back to realism, it would then start communicating with people again and more in mass in that case? Well, of course it does, because what happened is that one of the reasons, and this can be debated, and I'm not saying it is universally accepted, but one of the reasons for the departure from realism was historically the invention of the camera. And so realism really became a matter of mechanical transmission of images. So you have realism, uh, uh, realistic depictions of film in film, in advertising and photography, and all those are mass media. It, and then art becomes everything that those things are not. Uh, you know, it defines itself in opposition to that in some fashion. I mean, if, if the mass media has become the predominant form of art which doesn't really need a sort of a branded artist to conduct uh, then basically art is terribly I mean the art that we are discussing and uh, you know is, is terribly sidelined and it is yes and then then it is what it is and then I that mean, is how people react to it it is relatively sidelined I don't think that I mean if you have a William Kentridge show at MoMA half a million people see it so half a million people is not something to sniff at I mean it's a lot of people uh, but on the other hand, uh, a Spielberg film will still get, you know, that many multiples of the 500,000. So it still will not, even the most popular contemporary art exhibition in a place which is much more attuned to contemporary art than is Delhi or Bombay or Chandigarh, will still not compete with the real mass media. Yeah, that is a fact. Yeah, but my poems, all I can remember, like in one line poems or one word, is that okay? <laughs> um, that was when I was uh, kind of my words were getting limited and I was picking up words from memory or books like uh, because I believe in constant uh, practice or like you know kind of a dialogue with, with a kind of community and which I left in Calcutta and Shantri and yes, uh, one was like Hate to Hati Rekhe Chike Bol I wish there was somebody who could translate that for us. Uh, obviously, the gentleman who asked for it must be able to. <laughs> now, if you can't, if no, you can't right, understand was, Bengali, was, I'd be very. <laughs> no, it was nothing more than saying like, um, I just kept my hand on your hand. There is barely nothing else like this. Something. So I can translate the point since I am a Bengali that it says that I put my hand in his hand or in her hand but I had nothing in my hand it Thank says you. <laughs> Thank you Thank you Evening ma'am uh, My question is from you Will you understand Hindi? Okay You will not speak You can speak in English I can understand What is your journey You have taken your journey You have taken your journey You have said शुरुआत से बचपन से तो आपने शुरुआत में पोइट्री करी कविताएं लिखी फिर उसके बाद आप ड्राइंग्स पेंटिंग्स इंस्टॉलेशन तक एक ट्रांजिशन रहा और उसमें जो आपका ग्रोटोनेस ग्रोटोस ग्रोटोनेस जो एक चीर फाड़ और बहुत ज़्यादा ना देखने लायक चीजें जिस तरह से होता है तो जो आपकी कविताएं हैं उन्होंने क उस तक जाने में किसी तरह की मदद करी है या किस तरह का वो सफर रहा या इस तरह की क्योंकि कविताएं तो हम आपकी नहीं सुन पाए तो क्या कुछ तरह का एलिमेंट आपकी कविताओं में भी है अगर उस पर थोड़ी सी थोड़ी सी बात करें तो चलेगा थैंक यू आई 
I think I mean since I I was born uh, as a poet's daughter, I in the very early <laughs> age of my life I got to know one thing, the poetic license. So <laughs> I took all the advantage and freedom on it, and I started writing. And uh, since that language, uh, the Bengali language was so dear to me, still so dear to me. Uh, and I had a skill <coughs> to make it really sophisticated by saying all that I want to say. So my poems had everything that I desired to express. Mm. But as you said, ki na dekhne ki laik hai. I understand that uh, your concern, but I don't think these are also na dekhne ki laik. They are dekhne ki laik. And yes, yes, no. But you are very right, and that is the area, my. My, I'm concerned, and I'm working on that areas that those taboos, and uh, because I don't want to want them to win, and I'm not doing something which is forbidden, which is seen, or which is something I'm not supposed to do. I'm exploring those areas. There uh, may be less talk about, and not heard about and all those areas and uh, I, I mean I am spontaneous on working on those areas and that is I think that post-colonial feminism also talks about those areas. I mentioned that you know that, that talking about that marginals, that those areas. So um, and I, I, my poems also have these things but I don't know somehow um, people really love them because they are with Whatever I do, it's full of love, and if there is love, I think people uh, get that. And uh, it's yeah, I've been uh, faced that uh, censoring and all those things. Even with my poems, I had some problems. The editor cut uh, places like things and all the stamps, uh, stanzas, and all these things um, because they're na like na dekhne ka like na sunne ka parne ka like. <laughs> but I hardly like to remember those things unless I want to make it an issue. But if constantly I want to uh, make those obstacles as an issue, then I will actually uh, stop myself from what I'm doing. So I don't really care. My only one thing I really go with, the, you know, like a, um, like a, like a, my uh, uh, my strength is like a, I don't care, and I I believe wholeheartedly that I don't hurt or harm other sentiments and things. What I do is quite, I'm like kind of quite confident with, um, and that is my only. <laughs> it's not that you don't care, I think you care. Do I? <laughs> you care, you really care. That's why we see what we see. That's great. Yeah. The um, uh, option of writing you the letter of love open? Uh -huh. Yes, it's open. <laughs> okay, excellent. FreeMeToo.com because I had to, when I was doing this website, uh, that website designer said like it's a bit expensive to buy one domain name, so it's better to do this like a domain name. And uh, free me too, may, people may not love one, but me too send like, you know, so, and I got uh, more uh, applications because it's a name. So, um, yes, you can apply, but you have to, there is no you have to promise have of, yes. Patients are. You can even. You can also get. And sometimes to uh, surprise or shock people, I send the letter like a immediately. work immediately. And they said, like, oh my God, my letter even didn't reach to you. I, mm -hmm. So I just, I love the, 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 all these reactions. So <laughs> maybe you can uh, you can create a website which should be called mitusen dot love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wanted to say something. Yeah. Uh, I go with. Uh, the world of feelings, which is an artist and uh, it, an artist who thinks the earth is sacred is always creative. And that's one uh, great thing I've seen about the eastern part of India, whether it's Orissa, Bengal, Assam, all that part, they still are with nature and the sacredness of uh, uh, nature and the earth 
is still very much very strong over there. I spent a lot of time in Assam, so I could uh, correlate with all that. Now, uh, as an artist, you can work with anything, whether it's clay, paper, you name it and the artist will produce something out of that. It's a very creative process and you, it's, it's a constant process. It's not now I'm in the mood and I'm not in the mood. It's not uh, anything like that. It, it can be seasonal, like uh, a lot of the other creations that you do. But that secretness in the whole uh, act, uh, act of creation, that is the important thing. What, what uh, Yours is a separate reality in trying to put if all that uh, feelings which are from the heart into words. So there, there it becomes a limitation. But the feelings, once you interact with somebody who's got feelings, it's much easier for us to understand. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Mama, I want to hug you first. Ah. All right, come on then. Let's end with this. Thank you. Uh, it's a wonderful evening, wonderful experience. You see, you know, how she explained uh, the, 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 the notion of color, the meaning of color. How does the language acquire meaning when she mentioned those, you know, that, you know, colors of black, bluish black, greenish black. You know, then we think what is brown, what is white, what is pale, what is pink in terms of human colors. And she's, she was feeling so happy that she's ca called brown. So the, we have you no know, notion of brown in our mind, which maybe somebody who's white think brown is like black, you know. So it's, it's, it's all uh, experiential and it's very, very important what B2 has shared with us. In fact, throughout the week, we have been having diverse kind of experiences of, you know, uh, experimenting with uh, colors, with shapes, with ideas. And Mitu's was one of those which was very, very unique. Thank you so much, Mitu, and thank you so much, Girishji. Yes, certainly, you do, you do. And we, in fact, I, I, there was another, I uh, know, uh, two, um, there was a gentleman, he said, ma'am, uh, I want to touch you. And there was another girl, before we started it, you know, this is the kind of response she, you know, uh, elicits uh, from people. Thank you very much once again. Tomorrow we have a very exciting evening with Dayanita Singh, and Naveena Sundaram, uh, nephew, uh, sorry, niece of uh, Amrita Shergil, she'll be showing a film and discussing. And uh, uh, Dayanita has come specially from Germany. She, she was, she's to present something in Venice. Uh, and uh, she was half committed, but she made it and she's coming. We are very happy. And tomorrow we'll be having a lot of... Uh, people amongst us, amongst the audience, Tasni Mehta, Sadanand Menon, Nanak Ganguly, uh, Atul and Anju Dodia, they're all going to be here tomorrow amongst us, amongst the audience, then they are giving their presentation. And then you are free to discuss whatever you want to, anybody uh, who wants to touch Me Too. Me Too is not <laughs> averse to these ideas. She's bold and, uh, and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Yeah.